Hey everyone, Sarah here. I'm doing a quick re-record of the webinar we had earlier today. Um, looks like my screen was frozen through the webinar recording process, so it looks like some of you guys weren't able to catch up with the things that I was showing. So I'm gonna go ahead and redo this webinar. It's really quick, it'll be less than 20 minutes. Uh, for those of you that missed it, um, don't worry about it. This will be your webinar. So. One of the things that I wanted to go over were any sales funnel questions people had. Now, Angela was nice enough to send me her questions in advance. Um, she asked me that she had a seven day course. She wanted to know when and how to pitch her coaching program through that seven days. She also wants to have a tag set up so that when they enter that sequence, they get a tag. And when they leave that sequence, they get a tag. So let's jump over to Angela's example. I've already built it up. And I will show you what happened in how I would set this up. So the first thing is we're saying when someone subscribes to the form, so this could be you know on her website saying, hey, you sign up for my free seven day program for this transformation. They're gonna sign up. They will immediately get the tag titled Angela seven day course and they're gonna get a sequence. Let's go in here. And the sequence is set up right now. I just said, you know, day one, this is gonna be your introduction. Day two, you really want to wow them. You gotta have some quick, um, quick wins there. That's the first one that you wanna have. Um, if you can even squeeze a quick win into day one, that's great. If you honestly don't impress someone by day two, they might not be opening your emails every day. Um, day three, another quick win. By the way, quick wins are anything someone can complete under five minutes that makes a significant impact. Um, and this is where you can mention a soft pitch about her coaching program. So Angela, that's when you're gonna just mention, oh, you know, this is something you can do. Um, if you're really interested in learning more about it, I have a coaching program. Don't put in, like, you can put a link in there, but don't be like, buy now, put in the price or anything. You can just mention it saying, and if you know, if you if you dug this quick win, you know, I can help you do more. Day four, you really want to get to the meat of the subject. You're also going to talk about long-term goals. Now it's okay not to have a quick win. You'll have three days of quick wins. Now you want to have something long-term. So for example, if I was doing this, this might be um, seven days to, to amazing SEO on your brand new website. So I would talk about quick, easy things that they can do on day one, two, and three. They're going to make a significant impact. Perhaps day three would be something like um, making sure all your alt tags on your images have great descriptions, downloading the Yoast SEO plugin. Like those are easy things that they can do. Day four, I'd really want to get into the meat of it and explain SEO, how it works, how long it takes to do. Uh, if you're not doing videos yet, day five would be a great day um, to do a video and you could also do a soft pitch um so or if it's still text make it be another in-depth training you want to say hey these are all the things you want to do and by the way if you feel a little lost or you think like if we're getting really pumped by this you know i do have a program that walks you through this and you know it really you know 10 times your results day six you want to wrap it up you want to talk about how to track changes and how they're gonna see those changes. So once again, if it's SEO, I would say, you know, in 30 days, you're gonna see this. In about three months, you're gonna start seeing some impacts in site visitors, Pinterest pins, things like that. You know, in a year, you're gonna probably see traffic increase of this. You know, if you were a fitness nutrition coach, you would say, hey, um, now that you're adding more protein into your diet, you're gonna see at 30 days this, 90 days this, and um, you know, at the six month mark, you're gonna see this level of that your body is toned because the protein increase. By the way, and this is where you make a hard pitch, it's okay to, um, to have a buy link. That's you know, up to you there, but you definitely wanna talk about the program because you wanna say, listen, these are the results you're getting from doing these steps, days one through six, one through five really, now, if you want to continue this, if you want to do something more, like this is the program for you, day seven, wrap it up, you know, um, 
if you want, like, especially if any of these days you link to a video or you link to a blog post, I'd recap days one through six and then give that hard pitch, buy now, a button, a dollar amount, all of that in the sales email and you're done. So Angela, that's just how I would set it up. Um, the ConvertKit blog has a lot of great stuff about how to have a convincing um, course and gives you sample content. The other great thing is um, find very successful people in the business who have free email courses and subscribe to a bunch of them. I know you're going to be like, oh, my inbox, so many emails, but just throw them all in a folder because you're going to want to look at how often they sent those emails, what their content is, get your ideas from the best and brightest out there. Okay, so now they've gone through your course. Let's go ahead and jump back in here. Um, so they've gone through that sequence. Now what Angela wanted was she wanted a tag to disappear as soon as they're done with the sequence. And the reason we're having tags is because Angela specifically requested, I want to make sure I don't send my newsletter broadcasts to people while they're in my course. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna send them a tag as soon as they get into the course and a tag as soon as they leave. Right now, the visual automations does not allow you to have opt-out tags. However, rules still do. So let's go back over into rules and we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and you're gonna see once they've completed her seven day sequence, the tag is removed. So this is gonna be perfect for her. She can go into broadcasts, new broadcast, and she can make sure that she's not emailing anyone that's currently having her tag. And that's how Angela would set that up. Now, some of you are wondering, oh my gosh, if you remove the tag, how will you know who's completed that, you know, what if I want to email people who've completed that? Well, that's pretty easy. You can just go into forms. Anyone who's ever subscribed to the form, you can email them. Even better, if you are tracking your clients through ConvertKit, like you could manually go in and set up a tag and manually tag people who are clients. Um, I definitely do that. So let me see. And so, past client. So she could even say, who's been through my course? I want to email them, but I don't want to email them if they've already become a client. So she wanted to send out a broadcast to people. She could still do that. Now, like I said, my past tag I set up, I manually go in and add it to people, but it's super useful because, um, you know, people who are past clients, you have a different level of communication with than with people who are not clients yet. So this is the example for Angela. Angela, I hope this helps you. Um, so you're going to be setting it up like this. And like I said, you have to last minute govern the rules. Now, for the rest of you, I went ahead and created this beautiful monstrosity. Uh, one of the first things I want to point out is Always name your sequences so you know what they are. Because um, if you just say sequence, you know, sorry, automation rule two, that's really vague. Say what it is. So what I have here is I have tags. Now these are still set up in the traditional rules. So whenever someone purchased one of my teachable courses, I give them a tag. And then, and you can set up as many of these things as you want. Um, I don't think I have another course, so let's just pick this. There we go. Pretend this is a course. <laughs> so all of these go through. These are all courses. I want to have the course each get one email that welcomes them saying, hey, thank you for purchasing my ConvertKit course. This is what it's about. Thank you for purchasing my web designer course. This is what it's about. Thank you for signing up for my free five day mini web design course. This is what it's about. Same thing, add here, email sequence. You can either pick one you already have 
or you can choose create a new sequence. I'll throw everything to the left hand side. And that looks great. Save. We could probably name this welcome three, but go ahead and mm. that 18 works for me. So what I'm saying is, okay, one email sequence, they all get welcomes, but I don't want to like, they're all going to get the same content after that one customized first email. So I'm saying dump them all into a new subscriber sequence. I want them first to get, hey, thanks for purchasing this product. This is what this product is about. I hope you enjoy it, blah, blah, blah. And then they're going to go into my new subscriber sequence that I have already set up. Then I'm setting up this conditional rule. In my new subscriber sequence, I ask people, are you a web designer? Are you a graphic designer? Or are you neither of these, but you're interested in how to manage your website? So now I'm setting up a conditional rule that says, has a web designer tag. If they have that tag, then you would say, sign them up for design best practices. If they don't have that tag, skip all the way down to the next conditional rule. Now I have, has a not designer tag. Well, I'm gonna tell them how in non-designer ways they can help their improve their website. Here we go. That's a new sequence. Now, if you aren't a web designer, you haven't said not designer, but you say, let's go over here into condition. But you said in that sequence email, you clicked on the link that you said, you're a graphic designer. And just give it a moment as it adds it. And I'm gonna say yes. Add them to the design best practices. Cause do you know what? I think the graphic designers and web designers should both get the design best practice sequence. So it's gonna go ahead and add that. So now everyone is covered. There's three tags in the new subscriber sequence that I asked people to identify. After they've completed the sequence, if they have a web designer tag, they're gonna go into the design best practices sequence. If they have the not designer tag, they're gonna go into the new website sequence. If they have the graphic designer tag, they'll go into the design best practices sequence. Now that's the end of my automation. Um, as far as I can tell, you can make these as long and complicated as you want them to be. So for example, you can add on as many things under yes or no as you want. You can make this go as long as you want. So if you have taken the time to write a bunch of sequences and you just want to constantly be giving um, you know, your readers evergreen content, which is very useful if you don't want to send out um, if you don't create enough content to send out like a weekly or bi-weekly email, but you have enough evergreen content, you could sign people up for sequences that send a week, you know, that send an email every four days or once a week. You could make sure that as soon as sign, someone signs up through any of your forms or purchases anything, that they have like three months worth of content to go through that's all automatic and flawless and you've set it up. And you've even set them up to get something more custom to what they want to learn about, like design best practices. So this is how you can set up automations. Just like I said earlier, remember that there's some things that are gonna still live in rules. Um, right now, automations, as we showed in Angel's example, you cannot remove tags. However, you still can do that in roles. I've emailed ConvertKit. I'm gonna see if they'll add that to the automations. Remember, our visual automations is still in beta, so they're still testing and working it out. If you run into any problems, you just jump over to Mesh and Desk and um, send them an email. Uh, hopefully, they're gonna add their remove tag. One thing that they're still gonna do with tags is remember the click a link tags. So just like, um, I have some stuff up here. You know, here's the one, not a designer, web designer, graphic designer. I had these set up in an email so that people could pick and choose. 
If you wanna learn more about that, I have a blog post about it. Let's go to runner to my website and you go into email marketing. I like to call them here, how to use ConvertKit's tagging system to make readers open every single email. This is that, I like to call them choose your own adventure emails. This is where you would pick three links, four links, five links, one link, two links, however you want to tag people, they can self-identify. Um, I have that set up over in ConvertKit so people could identify in one of the three areas, web designer, not at all into design, or graphic designer. So that is this webinar and this is visual automations. I'll be releasing more webinars in the future. The more that visual automations keep rolling out and keep working, but the conditions are awesome. We've really been looking forward to them. There's some stuff that they can do that haven't worked in any of the examples. Sorry, not haven't worked. Um, haven't been needed in any of my examples, but I'm going to just throw in here real quick because they have event-based conditions. So one of the things is a date. This is pretty useful if you're going to have a webinar or doors closing email or something like that. So you can go ahead and pick a date. So let's say Monday at 12.43 p.m. is central time. You can say at that time they get this sequence. So this would be pretty useful if you're going to, you could even set up a quick automation for webinars. So for example, you could say, hey, everyone who signed up from my form, you know, you could shorten this up and say, okay, someone signed up through my form for my webinar. Okay, on this date, I want you to send a reminder out, you know, you just pick the sequence. Build out the sequence, you could say day out reminder. So you could schedule this. So my webinar is Saturday, October 7th. So you could have set this, I could, in my example, I could have set this for Friday. And this would be the day out reminder. And then save that. And then I could send another date and specific time, you know, and I could say 1150 and give them another one email sequence that says, hey, the webinar's starting. Um, super useful that we can do all this. This also works for you scheduling out all of your closed door emails. It's so much nicer to see them in here. You can clean out those sequences afterwards. Um, it's so hard to see schedule a series of broadcasts about um, a webinar that's closing or a course that's closing where you're going to have multiple emails. This is nice. You can schedule the dates here. The sequences can be one-off emails. And then once, you know, everything has been run through, you can just turn off the sequence. I'm sorry, turn off the visual automation rule um, and you can delete out the sequences or you can leave the sequences in there, turn these to pause, and when you're ready for another webinar, so let me go ahead and delete this. When you're ready for another webinar, just swap out the sign up form, They'll and then it change the content, and you'll still have an evergreen, hey, don't forget your webinar's coming up, change the dates, and you're all set to go. So that's it for visual automations. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me at sarah at sarahagers.com or you can always find my contact information on my website.